God, you are good. You are my daddy. You are in charge. charge. Your, Your kingdom, kingdom come. I need help. Heal me. Encourage me. Lead me. Pardon me. So do they. Those I love. Those, those I, I don't. don't. This hurting world. Thank you. Welcome to your best 10 minutes, a series of lessons on prayer for those who struggle to pray or puzzled by prayer, or confused by prayer, who've tried to pray but failed, who want to pray but don't know where to start. <laughs> We've condensed all the prayers of the Bible down to a simple, portable, pocket-sized prayer. You can take it with you. And my suggestion is simply this. You spend a few minutes every day with this prayer, maybe just 10 minutes. I believe you'll tap into an aquifer of power you didn't know existed. It's a portable prayer. It reads just like this. If you're going to say it out loud with me. God, you are good. I need help. So do they. Thank you. Say, God, you're good. Everything begins and hinges upon the goodness of God. And since God is good, we can say, Lord, I need help. Heal me. Encourage me. Lead me and pardon me. So do they, those I love, those I don't, in this hurting world. Amen. So what does it mean to say, Lord, lead me? When we ask God for help, specifically help me solve this problem, show me what to do. How does God respond? How should we pray? Is there a way to give God our problems? before our problems take control of us. Lord, this is our question today. We place it before you. We welcome your work. Hover above us, work within us. Steady our thoughts, open our hearts. Our minds are distracted with a million and one things we need to do, but Lord, for the next few minutes, take our thoughts. Make them submit to you. Devil, any force of power, any evil, any malevolent force, you must leave. This is the house of God. And these are the children of God. And they have come to hear from God and not you. So you leave. Lord Jesus, please now take authority. Please speak to our hearts. Forgive the sins of the one who speaks. For they are many. Grant that we might see Jesus in just Jesus. Through Christ we pray. And all the church said? Amen. There is a phrase that strikes fear in the heart of every parent. You want to see a daddy's face ashen? You want to see a mommy tremble, stammer, and stutter? Then you stand close enough to them as they look at the gift that they just purchased for their son or daughter and see written on the box of that gift three words, some assembly required. <laughs> I tell you, it'll strike fear in the heart of the most courageous mom or dad because they know that although they, they, they just wanted to give their child a gift, all of a sudden they have a lifelong project <laughs> because the pieces never fit. A doesn't always connect to B. C doesn't always line up with D. And every mom and dad, check me on this, every mom and dad has wondered, can you just skip steps four, five, and six all together? <laughs> I'm convinced that the devil lives in the details of toys. <laughs> and that whatever the workplace is where mom and dad are trying to assemble that toy, little tiny minions from hell <laughs> are released into the workplace. And they snatch the screws and the bolts and the brackets. And somewhere in hell right now, there's this big warehouse full of <laughs> snatched brackets and screws. Pieces don't always fit. Some assembly required. That's true when you buy a gift for your kid, but you know what? That's true in life. I'm wondering if on marriage licenses, there ought to be three words. Some Assembly required. <laughs> Job applicants ought to see these three words before they sign the contract. Some assembly required. 
I think babies should exit the womb with a tiny tag on their big toe that says, some assembly required. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Life is a gift, but it's a disassembled one. It comes in pieces, and sometimes it goes into pieces. And we've got to put the pieces together. And sometimes the pieces just don't fit. We've got more challenge than we have strength. Got more questions than we have answers. Got more struggles than we have patience. A doesn't fit B. So what do we do when we have these problems in life? Well, the invitation from the Gospels is simply this. Bring them to Jesus. This is exactly what Mary did. Mary, yes, the mother of Jesus. She encountered a problem and she brought it to Jesus first and left it with him. And because she did, a wedding was saved and a story was left. The story outlines itself. It's found in John chapter 2 and the story begins with the statement of a problem. A problem. On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited into the wedding. Now this is just a common wedding. The bride is not a princess. Uh, the groom is not a hero. No one's famous in the wedding party. Had there not been one interesting detail, we would not be talking about this wedding 2,000 years later, would we? But that interesting detail is this. The, the guest list. The guest list. When the parents and the the couple about to be married sat down and made the guest list. They, well, they wrote Benjamin's name on it, their friend from Cana. They wrote Saul's name on it, their friend from Jerusalem. And somewhere down the list, somebody wrote these, this name, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus was only nine miles away from Cana. We don't know if Jesus was a family member of the wedding party, maybe a cousin or or maybe just a close friend, we do not know. But we do know this, they invited Jesus to the wedding. And since Jesus always goes where he's invited, he and his disciples showed up at the wedding. Maybe that's why they ran out of wine. Maybe Jesus wasn't supposed to bring all those guys. <laughs> but for whatever reason, the wedding party ran out of wine. Someone underestimated the size of the crowd or the appetite of the guests or the depth of the wine vats. As a result, there was this problem. There was a wedding with no wine. Or in your case, there's a payment due with no money. Or there's a problem with no solution. Or there's an argument on your team and no willingness to solve it. Life has a tendency to run out of what we need. The wedding ran out of wine. And so there was a problem. Enter stage right, Mary, the mother of Jesus. For my nickel, she appears too seldom in scripture. Who knew Jesus more than Mary and better than Mary? She carried him in her womb for crying out loud. She breastfed him. She watched him learn to walk. He ate at her table. Who knew Jesus more than Mary? So when Mary speaks up, we perk up. She's the ultimate authority on Jesus. And so when Mary prays, we listen. Because the way she dealt with the problem was with a prayer. Two interesting thoughts. One, this is the first prayer to Jesus recorded in Scripture. The first prayer to Jesus recorded in Scripture. Of all the zillions that have followed, Mary, the mother of Jesus, offered the first. And this is the only prayer we ever read from the lips of Mary to Jesus. 
And so here it is. The mother of Jesus said to him, <clears throat> they have no wine. <laughs> That's it. She just took the problem, took it straight to Jesus. Before she took it to the master of the wedding, before she took it to the bride or to the groom, before she did anything else, she took the problem, I have a problem, and she took it and she walked into the presence of Jesus and she put it in front of him. Here it is, four words, they have no wine. How simple, how unadorned. She did so respectfully. She wasn't bossy. She didn't say, they have no more wine. Now here's what I want you to do, Jesus. I want you to go down to the corner and you know there's a grape grove there. I know the grapes aren't ready, but I've seen what you can do. Accelerate the harvest, make some grapes, get some wine, get it here fast. She didn't try to fix the problem. She wasn't bossy, nor was she critical. You know, Jesus, I don't know what this world is coming to. <laughs> I mean, who is it? They can't plan enough wine. It's just all oh, the world is going off the deep end. What's going to happen next? We're going to have a war. It's going to be disastrous. I'm gonna... She didn't overreact. They have no wine. She didn't blame the guests. She didn't say, these people just drive me crazy. If only they would have asked me first, I could have told them. And interestingly, she didn't blame Jesus. She didn't say, if you were really who you say you are, we wouldn't have this problem. I don't believe you exist. <laughs> she just stated the problem. She didn't whine about the wine. I thought that was clever, you didn't. <laughs> she just stated the fact, four words, they have no wine. Now, what follows, at least in my opinion, is the most fascinating dialogue on the whole idea of prayer in the Bible. Here's how Jesus responds. <clears throat> Jesus said to her, Woman, now that was a respectful term. I know sometimes when we use it, it's not, but, but it. <laughs> <clears throat> Woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. And his mother said to the servants, whatever he says to you, do it. Hmm. This is interesting. Apparently, Jesus had no intention of bailing out the wedding. It just wasn't his plan. It wasn't on his schedule. It, it wasn't the way he was going to reveal his power. This is his first miracle. And I can think that there might have been more dramatic and more emphatic ways to perform your first miracle than turn water into wine. So I can understand the hesitation. So Jesus expresses his reluctance to do anything. This was not his plan to do anything. So Mary, upon hearing the reluctance of Jesus, says to the servants, whatever he says to you, that's what you should do. She doesn't berate him. She doesn't try to arm twist him. She just trusts him. In my imagination, I see Mary at this point turn with a very peaceful expression, very serene, just turn and walk away because she's done her job. She has identified a problem and brought it to Jesus and left it there. In my imagination, I see Jesus smile, maybe chuckle, maybe shake his head just a bit, look up into heaven. And then he looks over in the corner and he sees six water pots and he decides to do something about it. 
Jesus said to the servants, fill the water pots with water. Now, did we just read that correctly? Did Jesus not just express his reluctance to do anything? Did he not say his hour had not yet come? And yet Jesus chooses to do something. He wasn't going to do anything, yet because someone he loves comes with a genuine need, offers it reverently, respectfully, and trusts him to do what is right. You know, faith gets to Jesus every time. And this time it got to Jesus. And he actually altered his plan because of the genuine prayer of Mary. Jesus said to them, draw some out now <clears throat> and take it to the master of the feast. Well, if you know the rest of the story, you know how the master of the feast tasted the wine, licked his lips, and said to the groom, whew, that's good stuff. <laughs> Most people save their good wine, I mean, use their good wine at the beginning of the wedding and save their, you know, convenience store wine to the end of the wedding. But this is the best. And not only is this good wine, not only does he comment on the quality, John makes it clear that we understand the quantity of the wine because Jesus filled six stone jars, 30 gallons apiece, to the brim. Quick calculation of that, 903 bottles of wine. 903! As if Jesus is saying, boy, when I answer a prayer, I'm going to answer a prayer. He answered that prayer extravagantly, not hesitantly, not reluctantly, not begrudgingly, but extravagantly. Mary had the problem. She took the problem to Jesus. She stated it clearly. She left it with Jesus. She said, whatever he says is what I'm happy with. Jesus, touched by her faith, responded, actually altered his plans, and blessed the wedding with a story they would never forget. There's another version to this story. In this version of the story, Mary chooses not to take the problem to Jesus. She instead goes to the bridegroom and says, what were you thinking? Look at this, we're out of wine. And she takes it up with him. Well, he takes issue with her criticism. And he says, don't be so hard on me, Mary. Why don't you just get out of here? And Mary turns in a huff and she leaves. And... The bride-to-be, seeing the groom argue with Mary, comes over and finds out that they've had an argument, and she gets upset. And she says, if you can't plan a wedding, you certainly can't manage a marriage. I'm leaving too. And all of a sudden, everything is over. <laughs> and in the corner stands Jesus thinking, why didn't you just talk to me about this? <laughs> now that version is not in the Bible. But that version is on your street in your office building, in schools. What is a small problem becomes a major crisis, all because nobody brings the problem to Jesus. So the message of this story is very simple. Take your problem to Christ. Take it to him. Before you do anything else, take your problems to Jesus. Don't take your problems to the nightclub. Jim Beam can't fix your problems. He can't. Don't take your problems out on your family or your friends. That only creates more problems. Listen, the second you sense a problem. 
however large, however small, the second you sense a problem, you take that problem right to Jesus, wherever you are, wherever you are. If you're sitting at your cubicle, if you're sitting at the desk at school, if you're sitting in traffic, then you just say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I've got a problem. You're saying, Max, if I take my problems to Jesus, every time I have a problem, I'm going to be talking to him all day long. (laughs) Isn't that the point? (laughs) Scripture says, don't worry about anything. Instead, what? Pray about everything. Tell God your needs. And don't forget to thank him for his answers. Could it be any simpler? If you do this, you will experience God's peace, which is far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. And his peace will keep your thoughts and your hearts quiet and at rest as you trust in Christ Jesus. I'm suggesting that every single one of us could state this phrase more than we do. And that is, Lord, lead me. Show me what to do. Jesus, I have a problem. State it simply. Present it in faith. Leave it with him and say whatever you say. Dr. Helen Rosevere learned a lesson about taking problems to Jesus. For 20 years, Dr. Helen Rosevere was a missionary in the Congo. And she served at an orphanage and at a clinic. During the fourth year of her two-decade service in the Congo, she had a young mother die in childbirth. The death in and of itself was tragic. But the fact that the mother left a two-year-old behind and then that the baby was born premature made the situation even more complicated. The newborn baby, born premature, needed to be kept warm. But this particular clinic was so far from any population, they had no electricity, hence they had no incubator. So their practice was to take a hot water bottle and put hot water in it and bring it and place it next to the baby that needed to be kept warm during the night. So Dr. Rosevere sent the midwife to fetch a hot water bottle. The midwife came back with bad news. The hot water bottle burst when she attempted to fill it with hot water. And even worse, that was the last hot water bottle. It was late at night. They didn't have any other solutions. In fact, she didn't know what the solution would be. They were so remotely, they were so separated from any population. But she instructed the midwife to sleep next to the baby to keep the baby warm. And they would look for a solution the next day. The next day, as was the practice of the clinic and orphanage, they had prayer time mid-morning with the orphans. Dr. Rosevere expressed the problem to the children. She told the children about the baby that was born premature and about the baby's two-year-old sister who did not have a mommy anymore. And they began to pray. And during the prayer, a 10-year-old girl stood up and interrupted the prayer with her prayer. And her prayer, according to Dr. Rosevere, sounded like this. Please, God, send us a water bottle. It'll be no good to send it tomorrow, as by then the baby will be dead. So please send it this afternoon. While you are at it, would you please send a doll for the little girl's sister so she'll know you really love her? Well, the doctor was stunned because, as I mentioned, by this point she has served at the clinic for four years. During her four years, they have yet to receive one parcel delivery, not one package. The only way this prayer could be answered (laughs) would be for a package to be delivered. And she had yet to receive one package in four years. They were in such a remote outpost of the jungle. Even if a package came, who in the world would put a hot water bottle in it? They were on the equator for crying out loud. 
Well, someone did. Later that afternoon, a 22-pound package was delivered to the door. As she called for the children, the doctor's eyes began to fill with tears, thinking, could it be? She removed the string and the wrapping and opened it up. And with the orphans watching, she extracted the gifts, jerseys, raisins, sultanas, and wouldn't you know, a brand new hot water bottle. Next to the hot water bottle, anyone want to guess? A doll for the little girl. That package had been shipped five months earlier from a Sunday school class in the United States. God answered the prayer before the prayer was even offered. And Dr. Rosevere learned a lesson she never forgot. And that is the lesson of immediately taking problems to Jesus Christ. You've got problems. Life comes with problems. Sometimes the pieces don't fit. Sometimes wine runs out. Sometimes the hot water bottle bursts. Question is not, do you have problems? The question is, what are you doing with your problems? Would you please, would you please give your problems to Jesus? Just give them to him. State them simply, present them faithfully, and entrust him reverently. Whatever you say, Jesus, that's what I want. My hunch is, You'll be drinking from the wine of his provision before you know it. Lord, this is our prayer. Would you teach us to trust you more, to give to you our problems? For we tend to carry them ourselves. Today, we're wanting to learn more about just giving these problems to you before they tear us apart. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. And all the church said,